Hi there, I'm Andrew Bunnell, and today let's take a look at the physical pendulum using an applet. So I got the, the spreadsheet open, and it looks a little bit scarier than the last one, but that's okay. We'll get through it. Uh, I also have the applet and this uh, table dialog, which we're going to take some data from, and then this angular velocity uh, graphs. So I'm going to go ahead and choose some settings. I'm going to make my mass as big as I can. I'm going to say I want it to be to 22. Sure, why not? Now, you choose your own settings. And also, the finally, I'm going to drag this down to where it's under 15 degrees. And you're going to have to do your own calculation. I'm going to use the number, sure, I'll use the number 22 again. Uh, you know what? Let's see. Can I make this 2.2? 2.2, 2.2, 2.2. .2. Okay, that's going to be easy for me. So then, um, after a little bit of introduction and looking at this this uh, graph. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and click play and let this thing start going into motion. And it swings back and forth. Imagine being on a swing set but without friction. So and as it's going, it's taking data. And it's going to stop automatically at 10 seconds. So just wait for it to pause. And then we're going to control A, control C. So select any cell, control A, control C. Now in the cosine fit tab, we're going to come up here to H1, or sorry, H3, and we're going to paste in our data. It says to start out with a value of 0 0.001 is the uncertainty, and we're going to copy that down as well. It also says check up here to see if there's some duplicate values, and if there are, go ahead and delete those. And so like right here, I have a duplicate value, so I'm going to delete the top two, and then from there on out, it should be just fine. But I'm not going to delete shift cells up. I can clear contents, or I can just hit the delete button on my keyboard. All right, next I have some data in there. I got to go down to the graph and estimate some of my values. So to get A, I would do the maximum. I see uh, maximum at 0 0.21, and I see the minimum. Let's see. Click here, click on a minimum. And so I'd subtract 0 0.21, and then I'd divide by 2. And so that's roughly is equal to 0 0.21 for my amplitude. Now my period, you can do it a couple different ways. You can do a range of periods, like for example, I could say, what's this value right here? Uh, sometimes it takes a little while for it to hover over a value. Let's see, click, is it gonna give me a number? No? All right, let's see, is it gonna give me a number now? Sorry about this. All right, I'm going to have to do this a different way. So I'm going to say 8 minus just a little bit more than 2. So that's uh, that's 6 point, I'm going to say 6.1. And divided that by 1, 2, 3, 4 periods. So I'm going to say that's going to be equal to 6.1 divided by 4. Now, if you were able to get it over the top, you could have done a similar thing and said, well, this one is 1 or it actually it just showed up, 0 0.81, 0 0.77 in time. And then over here, oh, let's see if the second one will work. Oh, wait, there it is. So I get 2.31 minus the, one point, the 0 0.83 that I got. But I'll stay with what I got. Now my C is a phase offset, and right here I see it's a maximum, and because it's a cosine, uh, general, I can keep it at zero, or I can start out at zero. Now, I'm going to fix B to 0, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And there's one more step before you get started. It says scroll to the bottom. So what I just did is I selected the column over from that, and I did Windows Shift down. And then I came over to here, and it says, oh, uh, I have extra data. So I did Command Shift down again, or Control Shift down after selecting the first one and hit Delete. You have to delete those extra cells. Okay, so now... And I've done all that. I got some expected values. It's going to copy and paste them in there. And I'm going to come down here between the two buttons and I'm going to reset. And what that just did is it copied those down there. It looks like my lines are actually pretty lined up pretty well. But if I go to the residuals, it's not so good. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Oh, not that far. So you can see the graphs. I'm going to iterate fit. And notice how it got a little bit better. Iterate fit. And I'm just going to go ahead and iterate fit 10 times. And you might have to do the iterate fit 10 times a couple times in a row to get your data good. So what we're expecting is this, 
the residuals to be random and scattered. We expect the lines to line up. And then we got our fitted values right here. Now we're not going to compare expected values because these are just estimated values. But we will report these fitted values. And so I'm going to highlight all these cells and then I'm going to go ahead to make them all numbers. And then I'm going to increase them until it's the correct rule of 1 and 2. So that one is correct, that one's correct, that one's correct. Just the bottom one is not correct. Decrease it one. And you're going to say, well, it's 0 plus or minus 0, 0, 0, 4. Well, yeah, because the uncertainty is smaller than the 4. So I'd report those values. And once again, we're not doing a z-score with these numbers. What's the physics model? Well, this is the math model up here. But what's the physics model? You'll have to go back to your, your discussion and look at the physics model. And now we got our variables, A, T, C, and B. You could describe what those mean. Okay, so now on to the next part. I'm going to copy the two columns. I could copy the third one as well, but I'm just going to copy the first two. And I'm going to come back to uh, finding the next step. And so the next step is going to be finding omega and finding alpha. I'm just going to put W and omega A for those. Angular per, I'm going to say rads per second for this. And this, this sorry, this is just rads. This is going to be rad per second, and this is going to be rad per second squared. And do you remember the formula? Well, the formula is going to be equal to, parenthesis, 1 after, minus 1 before in time, or sorry, in position, divided by parenthesis, 1 after, minus 1 before in time, parenthesis. And I can do the same thing with alpha. Oh, after I copy that one down, so I'm going to copy that one down. And I can say this is going to be equal parenthesis, 1 after minus 1 before in omega divided by parenthesis 1 after minus 1 before in time. I left those spaces there as a reminder that I'm supposed to delete the first and last cell for the omega and I'm supposed to delete the top two for alpha. So I'm going to go down to the bottom. I just hit uh, control shift down or command shift down and I can delete that one and the bottom two for alpha. When you go back up I'm just holding control and shift and the up arrow, and I'm all the way back up again. Now we got to make a couple a graph of these columns, and so I'm just going to go ahead and select all the columns. I'm going to insert the scatter plot, and my points are really big. So I'm going to double click on the points, and I'm going to go to the paint can, marker, marker options, and make them smaller. I think two or three, depending on what your system is. Now if you single click, not double click, if you single click it should select another set of data. And so I'm going to do the same thing built in. But if you somehow can't get the last set of data, right, in Windows you can hit this drop down box and select it. And I wanted to select the angular position and make it smaller. But on a Mac you don't have this little drop down arrow. So you have to click on format up here and come over here and then you can select the set of data you want. And I'm going to go ahead and do built in and make it smaller. All right, so some of the questions ask, well, how do you know that it grew the right way? And so, or like the, the, the amplitude changed the right way. And so we expect from the procedure, it's going to grow each time by 2 pi over t. And so let's go ahead and say, I'm going to put a cell right here for t. And I'm going to go back to my cosine fit. And I'm going to select that cell, control C. And come back over here and value paste it. So that's my period in seconds. Oh, you know, back here I should have put in uh, rads and then t for seconds and then c doesn't have units and b would have had rads as well. But that's okay. All right, so now we need 2 pi over t. And so I'm just going to say equals to that, equals to that, times it by 2, times it by pi. Don't forget to do closed brackets. And now I'm going to divide it by that value. So I expect this thing to increase by a factor of 6 each time for my data. All right, so let's start it with, with position, and then we'll go to omega, and then we'll go to alpha. So my first position is just fit, and so I'm going to come back over and I'm going to copy my A value. That's the amplitude that I had. Paste. And then let me, you know, just... You know, this is going to be calculated and this is going to be measured over here. And we don't need to do a measure for 
her uh, angular position. Okay, so we're going to say that is equal to that, times it by this number right here. And I hope to get the right thing. Let's see. Okay, now let's come over here and say we're going to say that is equal to that, times it by the 2 pi over t again. It's equal to 8. And I see I made a mistake because it's not going to be 2 pi over t, is it? Hmm, I feel like it is. So what happened to my period? 2 g1. Oh, it's not g1 times that. Okay. It's just going to be 2 pi over that. Okay, that looks better like what my data shows. Now to measure these, I'm going to just zoom in on the graph a little bit. And I'm going to try to hover as best I can over there. And I see 6, 6, 6, 0.66. I see 0.91. I see... 0.66 again, 0.91, and that's about as good as I got. So my omega, my measured, wasn't quite as good as I was hoping for, 0.66. But you know what? Let's let's just check one more thing. I'm going to say max. I'm going to just find what the maximum was. So I'm going to say equal maximum equals max, and then I'm going to select this one and control shift down, enter. And so my max was 8 9, which is really close to that. So I just couldn't zoom in very well. If I chose a different point, maybe I'd get a little bit better. Like that one's 0.70. It's still not that great. Now for my alpha, I can actually get a measure a little bit easier. This time I don't want a max because do you see how the residuals, or sorry, do you see how it gets more random and scattered? What I really want to do is I want to really hover over like the middle. And so right there, that point says 3.21. And that's a little bit smaller than I would expect. So let's try the middle of this one right here. And I say 3.35. That's a little bit closer. I guess it would actually be just even a little bit higher. And it's hard to get the right point. Maybe the middle of that big clump right there. 3.4, 3.5. I saw 3.5 for a second. So I measured a couple points. And it's hard to get the exact number. But if you were to fit that data, that angular acceleration data, you would find out that it has a much bigger standard deviation. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag those two in there. Okay, so now I'm going to put in the applet settings. So I'm going to put in mass, and that was going to be 3 kilograms. For, no, wait, I said 0.22. No, 2.2 kilograms. And I said A, or the distance from the pivot. Uh, it was actually percent above. And that was going to be 0 0.22 for me. And then we're going to have to calculate a D. And we also have to get it calculate an inertial moment. And so my D is going to be equal half the rod. The rod's one meter. So it's one half minus the percent above. So it's 0.28. Now my inertial moment is going to be equal to 1 12th times it by the mass, so that's k1 for me, and then I got to do times it by uh, the length of the rod, one quantity squared, times it by the mass again, times it by d squared. So I got an inertial moment of 0 0.33 and some change. So this distance was in meters, this percent was just a percent. I guess if I wanted to, I could drag this down one, and change length, and the length of the rod was one meter. And so I could have changed this one right here. I get the same thing. All right, so now we need a couple columns for MGD phi and I omega. And you know what, to make it a little easier on myself, I'm actually gonna drag this stuff over, and I'm gonna insert a column right here. And so I'm gonna say one is equal to negative mgd phi, and that's angular position, and 1 is going to be equal to i times alpha. And there's my alpha column right there. So first for my mgd phi, I'm going to come down where I have a first angular position. I'm going to say equals to mass. So let's move that out of the way. I'm going to say equals to mass, and I'm going to do f4 or command t to add those dollar signs times it by 9.8, times it by d, and there's my d right there, and then I'm going to times it by my phi, which is going to be in column b. 
I could copy that one down. Except for I forgot a negative. Negative MGD5. Let's see, is it going to let me copy it down? Nope, i got to drag it down a couple first. Ah! My sheet just got frozen. Okay. Because of the formulas right there. Huh? What happened there? L1, L1, B7. Did it actually equal to B0? Let's find out. No, there's something wrong with my formula. L6. Oh, my L6. Okay, I got it. So my L4 over there, which is right there, also needs dollar signs. So this time I'm just going to type them. L and 4, enter. Now I can copy that all the way down. Great. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do I alpha. And remember, I have I over here in L3. And I have alpha right there. So I'm going to say equals to I, and put the dollar signs around it, times it by alpha. Enter. And I'm going to copy that down column. Okay. Now the numbers look a little bit different. But sometimes the numbers are a little bit smaller, and sometimes the numbers are a little bit bigger. So let's take a look to see what it looks like. So I'm going to go time, MGD5, and I alpha. I'm going to insert another graph. Scatter plot, and I'm going to double click on the points, make the paint can marker, marker option smaller. Then I'm going to change to my other set of data, series MGD5 built in, and make them smaller. All right, this is exactly what I want to see. I, I see that the two lines line up really good. There's a few points where at the pivots, the and uh, I alpha is a little bit bigger, but there's a few points at the pivots where the I alpha is a little bit smaller. But I do see one more thing, and, and this didn't pick my time quite right. Uh, so let's see if I can see how it goes up to 1,000. Where I have this selected. Oh, I see what I did. Uh, see this right here? We're going to have to drag this down one. When you had this top column up there, it said this is also a thing, and so it only used the index instead. So now my my data lines up with time. If you want to have this time underneath the, the chart, we can double click on the Y axis, not the X axis. Go to the three bars, axis options, scroll down halfway and this axis value, make it negative a big number like 100. And now that shifts that axis over there. We can also act, add in some axis titles. Uh, what's this axis title over here? It's Well, it's torque and net torque. What is the axis title over here? You know, it's time. Don't forget to change those. Going back to the other one. Oh, a good thing to say is this is, is net torque equal to torque. Coming back over to here, we also need to add in axis titles. So I can do it from there, or I can come up here under design and add chart element and axis titles. And I can say the bottom one, and then I can go add chart element axis primary vertical, and change those titles to say this is either amplitude, or amplitude in radians, or um, amplitude in omega, sorry, omega, which is radians per second squared, or this one is in uh, radians per second squared. Oh, this one's in radians per second. And don't forget to change the axis titles as well. You're going to have to include these two graphs uh, for your final. And you're also have to going to include this fitted graph down here. So come down here and don't forget to edit these titles as well. While you're at it, you should also copy this box right here. Um, you don't have to fill in the z-score. Just copy the box, fill in the meeting, fill in the physics model, and uh, copy that and also include it with your report. And that's it for today. So thanks for watching.